Audi YouTube. I'm back again with another uh, couple updates for my printers. Um, as you can see, I got a uh, pretty complex print going on on the uh, Ender 2 Pro. Uh, I had a problem with um, after I did a bunch of calibrations and um, I did uh, some speed calibrations, uh, I tightened up a few items, and then uh, I had a problem with my Z offset. Um, with the Ender 3 uh, S1 Pro, it uses a CR touch bed leveling, so there's no Z in stop. Uh, it calculates everything, and then in Clipper, um, when you go through like a calibration it also gives you things like bed mesh and stuff like that. After I did the input shaper um, on both these systems, they now have a, a new menu that pops up, which allows you to to uh, go in and take a look at your current settings. And you can actually adjust it from here, which is kind of neat um, to be able to manually adjust it if you need it. Um, this one ended up having a bunch of Z offset issues and I couldn't get the Z offset to save and, and I don't know why. Um, I, re I redid the bed leveling by hand and did the Z offset and saved the configuration a number of times and for some reason every time it would save the Z offset it would give me an error message saying that the offset needs to be within the min, min volume and max volume. And then when I'd go into the config uh, in main sale, hold on, my dogs are playing. Get out of here. Go. Anyways, um, it would comment out the Z offset field. And then I was having problems manually setting it because I, I would set it here, look at the extra value, change it in the config, and it would actually end up getting worse. Uh, and it would end up dropping lower. And I know I was putting in the right values. I mean, the Z offset's not hard to understand negative and positive numbers and which direction it goes and all that. But it seems like it's like reversed in the config. Or I'm not calculating it right. E either way, it wouldn't save it. So it ended up actually digging into my bed. You can see in the back there is a divot at the end of the uh, the priming line there. So it actually ended up digging through the material. So now I got to replace the uh, uh, the bed material, uh, which is fine, but it was just a big pain. So I did end up getting another CR touch, and I'm going to be doing another video on uh, updating this to give it some some more advanced uh, Z offset capabilities because it definitely needs it. I don't mind manually leveling beds. I'm perfectly fine with the screws. And on this one, it's not really all that hard because it's such a small bed area. But the Z offset's been driving me crazy. I've adjusted the end stop a few times and it just doesn't seem to want to save my values. I'm not sure why it's doing it. I reset it a couple times, but at the moment, I kind of have it going pretty well. As you can tell from here, it's you know, it's printing fine. I'm getting the right height now, at least. Uh, this is a real long print. This is like... Um, like one day... One day... Ten hours. Now, I don't think the time's reporting right, because it says there's still one day, one minute left. And there's no way, because this is almost done. I think the height on this was only like a hundred and... 150 and we're at almost 140 we're about one one uh we're about uh 135 or so so it doesn't have much more to go um anyways back to some more updates while that thing goes um i've done some cal more calibrations on this one i've done input shaper that's uh sped up the um, prints quite a bit. It's also kind of quieted it down. Not that the stepper motors were loud, but there was a little little bit of a um, you can kind of still hear them and now they're not quite so resonating. You know, they don't make quite uh, quite quite as much of a resonating sound to them. Um, of course, the, you start seeing the limits 
of the hardware when you can start printing faster things start making different noises and then you, you know I did the rollers already with polycarbonate and, and I've done a bunch of adjustments but there's still there's still things that show up uh, that you notice like the the uh, y-axis extruder has got some cat casting or uh, powder coating imperfections and you can hear it resonate through the wheels when it goes through really fast um, uh, motions um, and you can you can't really feel it but for some strange reason when it really kicks in and the motor drives that you, you can you can hear it so um, one of the things that I've noticed with the s1 pro is that on the all my chip cubes all I've had and I printed this one specifically in this material because it's easier to see you can see the corners how they're not square and what's funny is the um, the Pro here, the S2 Pro, prints them very sharply. It's always been pretty good with the with the edges. I mean, this one's not the best of the prints, but but then you go to the S1 here, and you can see that the, the corners aren't great. And that's because it's essentially over extruding a little bit. So, um, you know, like there's just a little too much pressure advance, I think. So you can really see it in this particular one. And there was a little bit of a layer shifted issue at the bottom. I think I'd made a, made a couple changes. And you can see there's some other line issues. But that was because, you know... I made like a speed or a tension change to one of the belts. So that's another another sign of things you shouldn't do while you're printing unless you absolutely have to. So make sure your belts are tensioned the way you want them at the start and then don't touch them afterwards. So I did a pressure advance calibration on this, which essentially you print out this block and it varies the pressure from the extruder uh, and I think it's like 0 0.005 increments from under to over. And then I stopped this print because I already saw where it was getting bad and it was never going to get any better. And that's what you should do. No sense in wasting. Um, hold on. Knock it off. Ugh. Something about chihuahua barks are horrendous. So... Um, you print you print out this this cube after running some code, uh, and I'll show you the site. Clipper's got a, a page for pressure advance, and let's see here. Instead of having to put the link, here's the. You can pause the video and grab that URL, and it'll give you a link to an STL file, and you can download it. What I found is if you right-click the link and download it. For some reason it says it's corrupted, but an easy, there's a couple of posts I found online where they actually provide the code for, for this. And you can just, uh, or you can just click here and then go right to uh, the raw code itself. Copy and paste the whole thing, right click on the STL file and paste it in there using like notepad or something. And that'll fix that issue. And then you can slice it with whatever software you need to slice it with. And then, when you're done slicing it, cue that thing up for print, but don't print it. I'm going to close my door. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go into um, Clipper. And you're going to type in some codes. Uh, now, since this is a direct extruder, let me see if I got it saved or not. I probably don't. Um... You'll run two codes, and this gets ready to start the testing. The first one is this one. Set velocity limit, square corner velocity 1, acceleration 500. You'll cut and paste that. You'll put it into the code here, and that'll set that those parameters. 
and then you come down and you do the tuning tuning tower command set pressure advance parameter advance and it starts at zero so it's the minimum and then it increases uh, at, I believe each layer height uh, by 0 0.005 now if you have a Bowden this is for a direct direct uh, drive extruder if you have a Bowden setup you use this command instead then you print out your little tower like I did I stopped it before the print was done and then what you do is you'll measure with a pair of calipers from this line to the best portion of where it stops like here if I pull it in England you can see the shadow where it's bulging at the bottom and it kind of stops right about in here so basically what you want to do is you want to measure from here to just after the bulge goes away you want it more closer to the minimum line um, if you want to go a little higher you can but it's probably better to go minimum than max so I did it right about the middle you take that number in my case it was 5.75 millimeters 15.75 uh, millimeters you you add it's zero plus that which obviously doesn't matter but then you multiply it by the, the increments which is 0 0.005 you take that number and you go into your config file for your printer Let's see here. and then under the extruder you come down and you put in a line if it's not existing called pressure advance and in my case this is the number that I calculated which is 0 plus 15.75 times 0 0.005 and that's the number and you put that in there you rerun that you rerun your you save it restart and then I reran another chip cube and this is what I ended up getting so it looks it's a, it's a little fi finer line but look how sharp those edges are now and actually everything is sharper the text is sharper all the way around the top actually for some reason top prints out real nice now and that's what you want and the line there isn't really you can see late lines in there but they're not it's it's just the uh, they're so fine that you can't really even feel them it actually this is an excellent excellent print for this machine it's never done it this well now they say that after you do this calibration you really should do it per um, you know per each roll a lot of the calibrations so you should do it do a calibration before each new roll of filament if it's different filament I don't have a problem with that I would probably say if you do do something like that and you're putting these calibrations in your config file maybe you should comment out each new calibration number and put a comment on what what filament type it goes for this way if you happen to have filament that you use a lot and you switch in between because like the filaments will be all different the way you know how they handle heat how they extrude some filaments you print higher so there's more pressure than others um, this filament for instance it's a kind of a silky you know rainbow rainbow type filament ends up printing at a higher temp still PLA but prints at uh, 2, 205 210 this filament prints it's it's listed as I want to say 205 or 200 but it strings too much so I printed at 190 uh, and so that they do have different pressure values and uh, and of course different systems print differently like that being a Bowden setup too um, so it's a good idea to write on your labels on spools that you are using what your new your new uh, values are and then keep a record of it so I think that the idea of putting in multiple um, pressure advance lines and then commenting them out and putting in a comment on them uh, based on Excuse me, based on which filament you're using is a good idea um, I mean considering that most filament has enough data on their side labels for instance for you to sit there and put that information in um, 
like maybe the model number and the Silk PLA Plus Rainbow. Um, this is a this brand I believe is Sun Lu, I believe, and this stuff is really good. Uh, this stuff here is E Sun, which prints very very well. I like it. Um, so you can document that. Uh, either put it in a text file, or you can do it, or you can just keep adding, you know, your commented outlines. So, and when you, if you're new to, new to configuring these and commenting outlines, line commenting is just putting a hash in front of what you don't want it to read, and you can also put a hash uh, after a current value and put a note there. It won't read anything after that. So, which is pretty cool. So other than that, that's pretty much all I got for today. Um, when I start doing uh, my next video, it'll be tearing this thing down. Um, I have a new screen coming for the Pi on the system. And it's an IPS, so I can get some better clarity and, and contrast values on the screen to make it easier to use. Plus, it's a, I believe it's a capacitive. And I also have two uh buck converters inline buck converters coming so i can wire up the power the usb power to the power supplies in these systems um and then run all the cords internal uh, i also have to look at the main board in the s1 here uh, and see if there's an internal usb i can plug into and then i can run all the cables in the factory hole in the side uh, put them in a wire loom, which I've got plenty of loom material here, and then run it to the back of this. Uh, I also got my heat sets in my new uh, soldering iron with the heat set tip on it. So on this thing, I'm going to be, uh, and I got some PL, uh, PETG coming so I can redo the bracket on this. And then uh, I'm going to heat set, insert uh, the threads uh, so this thing isn't just trying to thread into plastic. I want it to go into to the brass uh, threads and make it a little more structurally uh, structurally sound. So that's pretty much what I got going on uh, this week. So most likely I'll be shooting this stuff on uh, Saturday, I believe. So other than that, now uh, if you guys have any comments or questions, uh, post it down below, and I'll talk to you guys later. See you.